Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about some professional ethics. Uh, obviously, as a CPA, professional ethics is one of the key elements of our profession that would permit our public trust and our ability to act with objectivity and integrity. And the Professional Ethics Executive Committee, also known as PEAK, has been very busy in trying to decide what projects it wants to take on and schedule them appropriately. So we're going to look at the recently updated Professional Ethics Strategy and Work Plan for 2021 through 2023. Now, this is something that did go out for public comment back in 2019. They put out a uh, discussion document that provided some thoughts on what topics they might put on their plate, uh, which ones they were uh, thinking for standard setting versus member enrichment, which ones they had decided not to, and as for our feedback on whether they were hitting the mark. And you can see from some of the um, changes that were made here that comments do make a difference. And so you're going to notice in a few spots uh, where they have adjusted uh, based on the feedback provided. So the first area that they're going to have some standard setting that we're going to talk about is the 529 plan. So first developed guidance regarding 529 plans back in 2005. And when they wrote that guidance, they considered it a direct financial interest uh, because the belief was those 529 plans, you were picking the investments. Now, 529 plans have really evolved over the last decade, and uh, many times you actually don't know what's inside of there. Uh, and so as a result, there have been questions on how can we make this a little bit easier. And so one of the standard setting projects that they're looking at is to figure out how to monitor these challenges and determine how to address independence uh, concerns regarding these investments. And this is going to be a Q1 2022 project. So not the highest priority, but something they definitely want to address. Another 2022 project is simultaneous employment. Uh, we already have some exemptions from the simultaneous uh, employment uh, rules for adjunct faculty. So if a, a partner is also teaching accounting at night uh, for the university that they audit, uh, there is an exception so long as they don't participate in the, uh, in the plans, uh, as long as they're not obviously involved in uh, making decisions and things of that nature adjunct faculty pretty much uh, are, uh, you know, they don't have a lot of decision making power. So we make an exception for them, as well as members who are in a governmental audit organization. Uh, the question that was raised is whether we should expand that to military personnel, someone who's serving in the National Guard, who are, is serving our country, and uh, potentially their firm might be auditing uh, an agency of the federal government or a department within the federal government and whether that would be an independence issue for the firm. And obviously we want to encourage people to uh, take part in our, uh, you know, in uh, defending our country and doing great things for our country. And so they are going to have a task force to look at whether they need an exception and whether there are any other exceptions that are needed uh, where we want to um, make sure that we're not prohibiting people from uh, doing great things for our country uh, and as a result of some of the independence rules. And so this one is also Q1 of 2022. Business relationships, this standard dates back to 1993. Uh, I was, uh, I'm trying to think, I don't even know if I was in high school at that point. So uh, it's been a while since they uh, last really addressed this and it was really through cooperative agreements. However, obviously our business relationships have evolved significantly since then. And so they wanted to take a look at some of these different types of relationships uh, and try to get some feedback on uh, relationships with non-attest clients as well as attest clients. And so again, they're going to create a task force um, and it's going to look at the different types of relationships that they have to make sure that we act with integrity, objectivity, uh, and independence because obviously those are the cornerstones of our profession. This is also a Q1 2022 project. One that's getting a little bit, uh, you know, sped up in terms of being addressed is this concept of client affiliates. Uh, I don't think people really understand client affiliates right now. Um, and there are some gaps in some of the guidance. Uh, so the guidance addresses things like common ownership by entities but does not address common ownership by individuals. And so when hosting came out, one of the most common questions I got were from the tax department say, well, what if I'm doing the tax return for an owner? Or what if I'm doing 
a tax return for this um, this party that was not an entity. And so uh, obviously it's been very difficult to uh, you know identify all the affiliates to begin with, but then to understand uh, the application to this for a lot of these non-attest services. And so they are going to set up a task force in Q3 of this year to figure out if we should apply this to individuals and if there's anything else that needs clarification. And in my experience, I think this is an area that we could really use clarification because I get a lot of questions in class about the application of this and things that people didn't necessarily think about when they were trying to implement, for example, hosting. Uh, they kind of looked at the firm and the client, but they didn't think about the affiliates of the client and that can be a problem. Another 2021 uh, task force is going to be on unpaid fees. So the requirement today is that you can't have any unpaid fees. And the question was, is there some immaterial amount, right? They're $10 past due um, that would not impair independence. And this was actually one that was pretty split in terms of the feedback that they received on the consultation paper. Um, some people felt like, uh, you know, trying to define what is trivial uh, could be difficult. Um, others felt like IESBA had already really addressed this. And so we can look to them. And so they are going to create a task force to develop, um, you know, whether there is something uh, that we're and unpaid fee is in substance equivalent to a loan or is there some um, you know amount that would not be uh, triggering this issue so that is scheduled to begin in q2 of 2021 uh, in Q3 of 2021, they are going to address digital assets. There's currently nothing in the code that provides guidance on independence threats related to mining or owning digital currency uh, or cryptocurrency. And the question was, are these financial interests? Should they be addressed in the code? And so a task force is going to be developed to discuss how uh, we can treat those uh, in terms of independence rules. And so obviously that's a hotter commodity. And so 2021 it is. One that I think I am happy to see at the top of the list, which is something that a lot of people ask questions about, especially as we look at revenue recognition and leases and CECL, is that we've got some really large accounting standards that we've either recently implemented or are about to implement. And very often the auditor is asked to help with the implementation. And often the question is, well, how much can I do before I impair my independence? And this is a really fine line that people have to um, to consider uh, when they go through this. This is not something that is, you know, you know, hard line in the sand. Uh, and so, as a result, uh, this is something that we definitely want to be thoughtful about. And so this task force um, is going to look at um, developing additional guidance regarding threats and safeguards regarding these new accounting standards. And I'm happy to see it in Q1 because leases is coming real quick as is Cecil. And I do want to make sure I know RevRec was one of the ones that we got all the questions about. So I'm excited to see some standard setting here. So that's it for the standard setting. However, they also do what we call member enrichment. Uh, and member enrichment are not necessarily new standards, but sometimes they come out as FAQs or they come out as tools or implementation guidance to help us understand an existing rule. And so these require um, a little bit more on the uh, implementation side as opposed to on the standard setting side. But these are some of the member enrichment projects that they selected. The first one with COVID being a hot, high uh, area of focus here is what is the definition of an office if you're working from home? Uh, and we see more and more people not have an actual office. And we also see um, a lot of uh, you know, with COVID working in a state that's different from your work state or uh, all of these different items. And so since they already have guidance on substance over form, right? So when we decide whether we're in the office for, especially for partner independence purposes, they're gonna provide some non-authoritative guidance on how, you know, virtual offices work uh, compared to the physical office. Uh, they're also going to address artificial intelligence here. And when we think about this, especially the ones where we're allowing a computer to make decisions. And so obviously uh, we can't outsource our decision making, um, but there's a lot of technology that could create a threat to independence here. And so they're going to take a member enrichment project to create awareness about some of the threats from using AI. Obviously they don't want to prohibit it because that is the audit of the future, but they want us to have good guidelines around how it's used. 
Conflicts of interest is something that they had considered potentially standard setting because they're of an increased amount of increase. So they were seeing more and more increase, especially on the ethics hotline. So the AICPA does have an ethics hotline. So if you're not sure, you can always call and get feedback uh, from the AICPA on what's going on uh, and they can give you some citations to look at. And they've seen recently an increase in inquiries. However, they decided that it really was more of an enrichment project. And so as a result, uh, they think there's enough guidance, um, but they do believe that there could be some support that's given, obviously, to respond to the fact that there's a lot of questions. They also are gonna make some uh, operational enhancements to the code. This is not changing the code itself, but making it easier. So they're gonna enhance the visibility of the enrichment material that they're creating, uh, streamlining the landing page, and also uh, creating some training on how to actually use the online code. So AICPA.org slash new code. Uh, and, and once you're in there, they're gonna try to make it a little bit easier. A lot of feedback they received on client confidentiality said that they didn't need a lot of guidance in this area. And then obviously subsequent to when they did their uh, outreach, COVID-19 hit and they felt like now when we're working from home, how do we handle data security? How do we make sure that if we're taking uh, you know, pri uh, tax returns home or we're taking audit work papers home, how are we ensuring data security and client confidentiality? So again, they're gonna focus on the risk related to this. It's not gonna be standard setting. It's just gonna be an awareness. And again, when we think about employment, obviously we think about an employment with one employer. Uh, however, the gig economy, Uber drivers, a lot of freelancers out there now are not uh, you know, going the employment route, they're going the gig, uh, gout, uh, gig employment uh, route. And so as a result, uh, they are gonna do some member enrichment on whether to consider some of these employees from an ethical perspective. And then some new services. So as we look at some of the outsourcing that's being done, uh, we can see that there's been an interest now in, okay, if a company is outsourcing to a third party, sometimes CPAs may be asked to perform third party assessments, or we might be asked to develop or design a financial information system for this third party. Uh, and so as a result, what are some of the potential issues here? Again, this is just member enrichment, it won't be standard setting, but to help give some guidance here. And the last project they really added as an other project is reporting of an independent breach uh, to an affiliate that's also an task client. Uh, so if you are aware of a breach uh, and we have a, the, one of the affiliated entities, maybe it's a sister company, is also an task client, what are the rules are going to be related to that? So again, I think that they have been really proactive here. I think there's a lot of updates going on. Uh, so hopefully uh, this will give you a nice update on what to expect down the pike. Now, obviously, Obviously, a lot of these will take several months to work through just even developing the exposure draft, then it goes out for public comment, then after public comment, it gets issued and then it's effective. So we won't see some of these as final standards for some time and we won't see many of them as you know, effective for quite some time, but it's always important to know what they're working on so that you can pay attention to maybe an item that is of interest to you. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Genuine Learning Blog and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.